worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Amen. You know, so many people around the world can't even come out of their homes. Some are afraid and some just can't come out. Yet God has graced us. God has blessed us to be able to come out. If you're grateful to God, just give Him glory for a moment. Oh, when you're watching on media, whether you're looking in from the windows behind us, or if you drove out here today, we're just grateful to God. God is doing a new thing on this earth. He's doing a new thing through you. He's also doing a new thing through some of our young people. Amen. You know, I'm sick and tired of people trying to tell me that all our young people are going to hell in a handbasket. We have some wonderful young people that are just populating not just Shiloh, but all over the world, just moving on behalf of God. Amen. And so one of those young people is here with us today, and she's one of our, our jewels at Shiloh. We got lots of jewels at Shiloh. Amen. This is certainly one of them. She is uh, just risen up following God. God has lifted her higher and higher and higher. And I'd say this, you ain't seen nothing yet. God has just begun. So I want you to show some love, show some favor and some grace to the wonderful, beautiful, magnificent, dynamic, Rihanna, come on, you got the grace.
Father, we arrest our attention unto thee, O God, that you would be glorified, that you would be glorified, that you would be glorified. This is our prayer of faith with thanksgiving and confidence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. sisters and so I shout out to my mothers now mothers around the world who are watching girls around mothers around the country and mothers who are within sound distance of this place today I just give you the title right now I'll always love my mama I'll always love my mama now you know the different types of mothers there's the absent or missing mother. Some who are gathered here today and some who are listening are saying, you know, it's great that it's Mother's Day, but my mama is missing. Your mama might be missing because she was not doing everything that she might have done in order to be there for you in your time of need. Maybe, maybe, maybe she was there, but now she's gone. Maybe she's carried away into the arms of God. And so this Mother's Day brings a moment of sadness and difficulty as well. I just want you to know that God has an answer for the absent mother, whether she's absent from neglect or whether she's absent because She's gone on from this place. There's also the questionable mother. I started to, started to say the bad mother, but I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings this morning. Everyone who is assigned and given the gift and opportunity to be a mother does not exercise it wisely. And so you have to admit, now, now we have this thing that every baby you see, everyone says, oh, that's such a beautiful baby. But there are some babies that are, to the human eye, more beautiful than some to others. Amen. But there are also some mothers who are better mothers than other mothers. And if let's put somebody on notice, if you think you had a bad mama, then uh, she did give you life. No matter how many mistakes she's made and how many hardships you've gone through because of here, your mother because of her, your mother did give you life and, and you weren't aborted, snatched out of the womb by her will and said she chose to suffer through those nine months and bring you forth. So the absent mother, the questionable, maybe even bad mother, and then there's the good mother, hmm? the good mother. I only have one question for the mothers that are listening today, which one are you? Are you the absent mother, neglectful, or gone? Are you the questionable mother who some might call even bad? 
or are you the good mother? Either way, and no matter which mama you have, you ought to say this morning, I'll always love my mama. Let's get straight to it. This questionable mother that I was talking about, this one that some say is a bad mother, got a couple of biblical examples. Watch out now. See if God is reading your script this morning. Genesis 27 tells the story of two brothers, uh, Esau and Jacob, born to uh, Isaac and his wife. And this mother of these two boys had a favorite son. You know how it is that there's somebody in your family that your mama likes better than you? Or maybe you're that one. <laughs> that is the favorite. But favoritism can create trouble. And so there's a jealousy between the brothers, Esau and Jacob, and the mother is promoting Jacob. The father is promoting Esau. Esau's a man of the field and Jacob's a man who likes to hang around his mama's skirt tail sometimes. But the scripture starts like this in Genesis 27. 20, when Genesis 27, 1, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his oldest son, and said to him, my son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now old and don't know the day of my death. Now then get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me so I may give you my blessing before I die. Now, Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so I may give you a blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now go, my son, talking to Jacob, she says, and listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob had some sense, y'all. He said to Rebecca's mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have some smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and to bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. This mother is teaching treachery to her child. Telling her son, it's all right to lie to get what you want. You just do anything it takes to get your quote unquote blessing. Even Jacob realizes that there's a potential curse in this thing, but his mama just doesn't demonstrate the sense in these moments to do what she should be doing. She's leading him astray. She's encouraging him to sin. I wonder, mothers, what your rap sheet is. When your child tells you uh, that everybody is doing it, do you just say, oh, it's all right then, since everybody is doing it, you ought to do it too. Is that the mother that you are? Are you the mother that just looks the other way and turns a blind eye? Are you the mother that encourages uh, the treachery? That's who Rebecca was. That's why she's a questionable mother. But in the New Testament, I found another questionable mother. In Matthew 20, beginning in verse 20, there's this story that unfolds. The scripture says this. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want, he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Now Jesus has just told them he's going to die. And the first thing that she says is, let me uh, make an intercession for my sons so they can get some glory when Jesus is gone. Uh, my father once told me, he said, if you think that people can't do without you, this is a scene from Jesus' life, uh, just die. And when you die, if they are good people the next day, 
they might have a moment of silence before they fight for your stuff. Jesus is not even gone. Just proclaim that he's going to die for them. And yet they're already fighting for his stuff. How many, how many have ever thought, Mama, stay out of my business? Uh, when your mother's trying to tell you what to do, trying to predict what your trajectory would be, trying to run their child's life, trying to determine their future, but really, maybe just seeking glory for herself. She saw the way the crowds followed Jesus. She saw the way that everybody was all up under him. And, and, and so uh, she said, well, if my sons uh, take these sheets, if my sons rise up, then maybe I'll get some glory too. Maybe I'll, I'll get some of this blessing and some of this popularity that Jesus has. After all, everybody loves Mary. Uh, I, I, I want to be like her, the questionable mother in verse 22 gets these words back from Jesus. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to, her, to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. And Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right and my left is not for me to grant. These places belong for those to whom they have been prepared by my Father. I want somebody to recognize that God's got a plan for your life. And, and it might be that your mother can speak into your life. But it might be that you need to just hear the voice of God. Because your mother's life is not your life. And I say to the mothers, listen to the heart of your child. I'm reminded of the police chief of the city of New Haven, Connecticut, Tony Rance. Uh, I was at his inauguration when he became chief just last year. And he stood up and he gave testimony to God for what all that God had done for him. But then he gave testimony for his mother. He said his mother spoke into his life when he became an officer, saying, one day, son, you're going to be chief. It seemed like it was so far away, but she didn't badger him or push him or try to uh, cajole him into doing that. She had just prophesied what God had showed her. And then she got out of the way and continued to pray. And God went about his business and she went to God with her business for her son. I'm saying to the questionable mother that's trying to run your child's life, uh, get out of the way. And if there's a problem, uh, tell them the truth. Speak truth into their lives. But, you know, they have a destiny that God has called them to. And I dare you just to step back and go to God and say, God, I offer my child to you. I know I didn't do everything I should do with my life, but Lord, uh, just give them the chance to hear your voice and to know what to do and how to do it. Uh, 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 this, this question my mother needs you to step aside and make room for women like this good mother that I'm about to bring to you. Hannah was the good mother. Uh, she was, uh, she was uh, in a place called Shiloh. And at Shiloh, uh, there was trouble going on. Uh, but she had trouble of her own. Uh, beyond that trouble, she was a woman who was childless. And to be childless in those days was to be uh, 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 asked, uh, 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 what is it called when you, when you they, they, they put you out, when they just uh, uh, marginalize you, when they, uh, they, they, they just ostracize, thank you very much. Uh, they, 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 just, they, they, just, they just talk about you because you don't have what they have, to have a child, especially a male child, was to ensure that your family would always have land and there would be inheritance for you. And so they scorned her. In those days, men had two wives, like some men do today. Hello, hello, hello. I'm talking to somebody. I'm, I'm two wives, one in one house and one in another house. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But uh, uh, her husband uh, had another wife, but he loved her so much. Uh, the scripture says like this, that he loved her so much that he gave her a double portion every time because he loved her even though she didn't have a child. Uh, do you love somebody because of what they got or do you love them because of who they are in Jesus' name? Samuel 1, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel 1, 9 says it like this. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. And now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. 
in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. Uh, uh, committing to a particular uh, strain of Judaism wherein the hair is not to be cut. She committed her child to God before she was blessed with a child. Oh, how many promises have mothers made to God? Saying, God, if you just let this baby come forth, Lord, if you just make a way, and then you didn't keep that promise. But there's somebody out here that was a good mother like Hannah was. You see, when God uh, answered her prayer, uh, but how then did God answer her prayer? And why is God not yet answering yours? Scripture says that as she kept praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. She was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Let me put a pin tack right there. The Bible says the Lord knows your heart. He knows your thoughts from afar. You don't have to always jump up and down and turn upside down and do cartwheels. It's all right if that's what the Holy Ghost leads you to do. But God hears your silent prayer. God hears the prayer that you're wrestling with right now. God hears the prayer that you didn't tell anybody and nobody else heard. God hears your prayers and he says, I I'm listening to you, Hannah. I'm listening. But Eli, the priest, uh, says, uh, it says, says Eli thought she was drunk. And said to her, how long you're going to stay drunk, put away your wine? Because he thought her response to not having a, a, a child and her response to everybody dogging her out, but she became a drunkard. But she stands up and says, not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking beer or wine. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Is there a mother in here that's been pouring out their soul to the Lord? Is there somebody that's been crying out to God for their children? Is there somebody who's seen their child struggling and not knowing what was going to happen next? You didn't know what to do and couldn't do anything else. And so you just cried out to the Lord. Uh, uh, he, she said, don't take your servant for a wicked woman. I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. She was a mother misunderstood for her fervor in prayer. I want to give an acknowledgement today that might be unexpected to some and surely she's not expecting it. Uh, don't you understand that if the pastor is the father of the church as the under shepherd under God, then the lady, first lady of the church is the mother of the church under the same hand of the same God. And I have to acknowledge that I did not quite understand my wife. I knew her to be a godly woman and I loved her. Part of the reason that I wanted to marry her was because I knew she could get a prayer through. But when we got married and began to cohabitate in our home, uh, we decided that there would be a prayer room. And, and I didn't understand. I thought we would always be in the prayer room together, praying together all the time. But see, what Hannah understood was that even though her husband loved her and would do anything for her, there was something she just had to go to God to all by herself. Uh, I, I didn't understand. I had never seen a woman labor like this before the Lord uh, as Sharon was laboring and labors in that prayer room. She'll go in there and close the door for hours and just uh, sing and pray and cry to the Lord. And if I was Eli, I might have said, are you in there drinking? But I've come to realize that the wine she's drinking of in the prayer room is not the wine of the world, but the wine of our God. Oh, somebody ought to holler today and recognize that sometimes you got to go into your prayer closet to in the, in the movie Prayer Room, the woman said, there's just this room right here where I can go in and close the door and there's no distractions and no trouble and no bother. Uh, what I've learned is that when she goes in the prayer room, uh, I just walk by. Uh, if she's crying, uh, I just walk by. Uh, if she's hollering, uh, I just walk by. Uh, if she's silent, uh, I just walk by. Because uh, she and God got something going on. She's interceding for me uh, and for Shiloh and for our children. I think about Mother Johnson at home sometimes by herself 
during this COVID crisis. Uh, folk were afraid to go in the house, uh, but she's there praying uh, like a mother prays. Uh, I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, she and Mother Johnson uh, are good mothers to the house of God, uh, praying for things uh, that have not yet come to pass, uh, understanding that God is faithful uh, and that he will hear uh, and answer their prayers. Uh, oh, there's the missing mother too. Uh, that's the last one. Uh, you heard about the bad mother uh, or the questionable mother. Uh, you heard about the good mother. Uh, what about the missing mother? Uh, See, Esther uh, gives us the story of a missing mother. It says like this, uh, uh, you know how the story unfolds. Uh, Vashti uh, got fresh with the king uh, and the king killed her, uh, had her head cut off. Uh, then he had the audacity to uh, go get all the pretty women uh, and bring them down so I could choose another one for my wife. Uh, and Esther was one of those. Uh, verse five of chapter two says it like this. Uh, now there was in Citadel of Susa, a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair, uh, the son of Shimei, uh, the son of Kish, uh, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, uh, among those taken captive with uh, Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah. Uh, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, uh, who he had brought up because she had neither father uh, nor mother. Uh, this young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and she was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when his father and mother died. Uh, you know, they don't tell us how they died. Maybe there was a bitter war when Judah was conquered. Maybe there was hardships and famine. Uh, maybe there was that day's COVID crisis that had taken their life. Uh, 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 but what do you do when you don't have anyone? Uh, somebody feels that way right now. Uh, had a good mother uh, or a questionable mother. Uh, but now that mother's missing. Uh, you didn't have a mother uh, or your mother is checked out of your life. Uh, and you're saying, what can I do? Uh, 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 my mother is missing. Uh, uh, well, uh, with or without a mother. I, I want somebody to take heart today uh, because God will uh, make a way. Uh, see, God is looking for the Mordecais. Uh, you see what Esther 2 7 said that Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter uh, when her father and mother died. Uh, a man who will love her like a daughter. Uh, a man who will provide for her like a daughter. Uh, a man who will protect her like a daughter. Uh, even though he's not hurt, uh, he won't creep on her. He won't mess with her. He won't stop her. He won't abuse her. Uh, God is looking for men uh, who will be the Mordecai's. Uh, but it's not just the men on Mother's Day. Uh, uh, don't you understand that Titus says it like this? Uh, then they, uh, talking about older women, can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, uh, to be self-controlled and pure, uh, to be busy at home and to be kind, uh, and, and so that no one will malign the word of God. Uh, I want somebody to understand, uh, even though you don't have a, a physical mother, a, a physical daughter, uh, or, or, or even if they don't listen to you sometimes, uh, God still gives you daughters to teach uh, and to nurture uh, and to lead uh, and to guide uh, and to love. Uh, I, I want you to know uh, uh, the mothers out there, uh, uh, God is, wants to use you. He doesn't say because she's your natural child. He, he says because you're an older woman. Because uh, you've been through some things. I wish I could get some help in here. You've seen some good days. Uh, you've seen some bad days. And you've seen some ups and downs. And you understand that everything doesn't always go howdy howdy. Uh, that there are hardships in this life. Uh, you know what Jesus said in this life. Uh, you will have tribulation. Uh, I know there's a mother today uh, that can testify. Uh, there have been tribulation. In their life, there's been hardship, there's been heartbreak, there's been disappointment, there's been trouble, and there's been pain. Well, I want you to know there's a common thread between the good mother and the bad mother and the missing mother, and that thread is God. See, see, when we talk about these biblical characters, those that trusted and walked with God, then God made a way. Can I call? the role. Uh, see, Rebecca had Jacob, uh, but Jacob, even though she was deceiving, uh, and he was called a deceiver, uh, he met God at Bethlehem, uh, wrestled with himself at Jabbok, uh, and had his name changed. Uh, God will uh, change your name uh, if you love him, uh, if you go to him. Uh, he had a questionable mother, uh, but God came through. Uh, look at James and John, uh, the sons of Zebedee. Uh, they followed Christ to the end. Uh, see, James died a martyr, uh, killed by a sword at Herod's 
command, uh, inspiring many to follow Jesus. Uh, and John is the one that wrote the marvelous gospel uh, that unfolds the story uh, of the firstborn uh, and only child of the living God. Uh, he's the same one uh, that was given the revelation uh, that is today the blueprint uh, for God's plan uh, in end times. Uh, his mother uh, was questionable. Uh, she had uh, questionable motives, uh, but God saw him uh, and touched him anyway. Uh, so I want somebody to understand that God is able. Uh, Hannah the good mother uh, had a good report too. Uh, Samuel was a great warrior for God uh, that killed many in battles, uh, but he was also the prophet uh, who anoints David as king. Uh, Esther uh, became the intercessor uh, who risked her own life uh, to save her people. Uh, so I'm trying to say uh, what God wants you to know. Uh, quit complaining about your mama. Uh, love your mama uh, for who she was. Because uh, God is going to use them uh, to shape you uh, into who he wants you to be. Uh, some hard times, uh, some difficult times. Uh, don't be hating. Uh, just understand. Uh, I never forget. 
in my pastor uh, teaching about the, uh, the, the, the scripture about prayers uh, and how the Bible says uh, that the prayers of the saints, uh, God, that the prayers of the saints uh, are like incense uh, in the throne room of heaven. Uh, they never stop working. Uh, so your mother prays uh, that she prayed for you uh, before she left this place. Uh, your mother's prayers uh, that she prayed for you uh, when you would not listen. Uh, your mother's prayers uh, that she prayed for you uh, when you turned her back on her uh, and talked about her like a dog. Uh, your mother's prayers uh, are still working. Uh, she may be gone, uh, but God is still answering uh, a mother's prayer. The prayers are burning. Like incense in the throne room of God. I know the song is an old song, and I'm not a singer, but I'm gonna take a piece of it and take my seat. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. You know what God is saying now? He's saying, Mother Young's prayers are still working. Mother Mo's prayers are still working. God help me. I want somebody to know whether I call their name or not that your mama's prayers your daddy's prayers are still working. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Hallelujah. I thought about it. Hey, listen. I dare you just roll down your window. Keep your mask on. You know, I'm not going to try to do it by myself. I got these gangs to just instigate me from behind. Before we pray, we gon' sing it. Somebody pray for me. Have me on their mind. Turn the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray.
and touch your heart and that you would move in response to what God has said and what God has done for them and for you. So I want to pray with you today for somebody that's never accepted Christ as their personal Savior. For someone that's never said yes to the Lord. You know, you've been around church, you've been around church, maybe you might even been a member of a church, but you've never really given your heart to God. Then I, I, I give you that chance. I invite you to that opportunity right now as we pray together that somebody would receive what mama prayed for, receive what daddy prayed for. Maybe it skipped a generation, maybe your mama wasn't in church, maybe she didn't know God, but your grandparents snatched you by the ear and took you to church and killed them all so Anyhow, you always wondered why mama didn't get it or daddy didn't get it. And you got just enough of it to know that it's real. And now you want it to come alive in your life. It comes alive because the Holy Spirit is deposited in you as soon as you accept Christ. So pray with me now. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, this voice speaks for every voice because you hear our thoughts from afar. And someone is feeling this, Lord. Lord, I, I haven't done what you told me to do. Haven't been who you told me to be. Haven't answered and publicly confessed you. But Lord, I believe that you're there. I can see that my mama's prayers or somebody's prayers have been following me. You said goodness and mercy, Father, they have followed me and kept me through danger, seen and unseen. I've I fallen down, Father, and I didn't, I stumbled and I didn't die. A thousand fell at my left and 10,000 at my right hand and it didn't come near me because Lord, you were with me. So Lord, thank you for being there. And now Lord, I'm gonna give my life to you. So, Lord, all that I am and all that I'm not, Father, because there's a more of a not than there is of an am in me, then I'm just going to give it to you, Lord. Please take my hand and lead me and guide me every step of the way. Father, to your glory, have your way in my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Somebody who's accepted Christ, say hallelujah. Someone who believes in God, for somebody in Christ, say hallelujah. 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 I'm going to ask as a closing prayer, I'm going to give a benediction and then I'm going to ask Lady Sharon to come give us a closing prayer. Amen. And this prayer is for those who are saved. Whether you just got saved or whether you've been saved, but you on this Mother's Day, you want to be a better saved person than you have been before today. Amen? Amen. And so this would be the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Unto him be power, glory, honor, and dominion henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. 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 After this prayer, the praise hymns is going to sing a song to kick us out. And, and at the gate, I want you to take your time because we have some gifts for you from the church. Amen. Have, a, have some face masks so you can... Like me, you tear up your face mask, you need another one. Amen. You get some today. But not just that, we also have a, a rose for all the mothers. Amen. If you're a mother in here today, we got roses for you. And then also, also, we have some candy. Amen. <laughs> so you get a candy bar, get some roses, get a rose, and also get uh, face masks in Jesus' name. So... Be grateful for that. Amen. Is there something you're trying to do, Shaquilla, before we close out here? I do have a question. Uh, who's the oldest mother here right now today? Amen. The oldest mother that's here right now. I see Marguerite is in there. I see Viola is in there. I don't know which one of y'all is younger. Amen. 
I ain't gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna mess with it. any other who could challenge those two. Any other who could challenge those two with age. Amen. All right, then. I actually have a whole box of face masks for each of you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's hear it, Lady Sharon. Give God the praises, Lady Sharon. <laughs> Oh. 